Hey, what's up guys? I'm here doing something a little different than normal. The van is, mm, how do I say this, disabled at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, the transmission decided to blow up on Wednesday and it's currently at my friend's shop, JNS, and they are gonna be doing a complete overhaul on the transmission while also doing a couple upgrades. So that was a bit of a bummer. Um, it wasn't anything I did. They got the pan off and found the little yellow plug for the, the transmission oil dipstick, which pretty much indicates that the transmission had never been serviced. And I have just gotten this van. Uh, I got it from my work, so it was a fleet vehicle. And unfortunately, I think it just wasn't maintained. Uh, the filter had not been changed and, you know, it was probably driven by people that just didn't care about it. So that's a bummer, but you know, now at least going forward, we know that the transmission will be good to go. So I don't have any van content for this week, but I am going to do a review on a bike rack. And this bike rack is the rigged ramble rack. And if you haven't heard of Rigged, uh, they're a company based out in Orange County called Rig Supply. They make the tire swing out that's on the van and they make the bike racks that we use. And to be completely clear, the owners are good friends of mine. They have been super supportive of me. Jason was in the last video if you watched it from the Whiskey 30 race. And I genuinely believe this is the best bike rack that's ever been made. I've had the Thule T2s, the T2 Pro, I had a one-up. I've tried them all basically, and this thing does not move. Let me say that again, this does not move. The bikes do not hit each other. They do not come in contact in any way. It is so well built. It's built right here in America and it everything is replaceable on it. You can replace the handles, the straps, everything is completely replaceable and it's built to go off-road. So that's why it's a great choice for the van. And we use the pivot rack here on my wife's Subaru. And I have the single stinger tray on the van, which is awesome. So I just wanted to do a little review. I don't think many people have reviewed them yet. Um, they're just incredible. And they're not like your normal T2, like stamped thin wall tubing or whatever it is. It's like that thin sheet metal basically. Um, this is the real deal. You can go off-road with two e-bikes on it and have no issues. So I'm gonna do a little walk around of it, kind of show you guys, and then I'm gonna do some driving and kind of show you just how well it works. All right, so as you can see, this is it on our cross trek, And this is kind of a small car for this rack. I think Rigged typically markets these towards like overlanders and off-roaders and whatnot. But the Subaru has no issue, you know, it's it's just a great rack for kind of whatever car you use. And I'm gonna just quickly kind of show you. Here's two bikes on it. I have my Turbo Levo and my Stump Jumper. And it's basically held in by this arm. And it's kind of hard to see, but this is all machined, super nice. Just, I mean, there's not really a rack like it. And if you notice these teeth here, this is the ratchet system that really holds the bike down. This is all replaceable. It's all just bolted in. So if something were to ever happen or years and years down the road, they're worn down, easy thing to replace. But basically that's how it works. You pin this arm right there. Once you put the bike in and then you just slide that down and if you want, you can make it go down a little little more and they're locked by using these quarter inch hitch pins right here. So this one's still locked. I mean, there, you, you really could not get a bike out of there. So that's pretty much how the arms work right there. And then in the back, they use these straps and there's a ton of different adjustment. So that's cool because these are just super easy to replace. You know, if you lost one, got, got one damaged or something, very, very easy to replace. And quickly on the adjustment, so that's how the trays mount. 
and if you notice you can just loosen those and slide these any way you want so like me if you have gravel bikes e-bikes different size mountain bikes you know sometimes handlebars and seats are going to have issues very very easy to just unbolt those slide them to whatever is going to work for whatever setup you have and then the front wheels are held in with these big trays like I mean they don't go anywhere that's like the main thing with my one-up rack um, if I still have the clip I'll put it in but because the tires aren't supported they can wiggle and the bikes end up hitting each other so no issues there and you can see the bikes are pretty close together and so like I said this is the new pivot version it's very heavy duty I mean look at that pivot again everything's replaceable and just so beefy like there's just no movement and so if I really shake this I just can't get these things to even come close to hitting each other so I think I'm gonna just go drive around and kind of show you guys I'm gonna put a GoPro on the back windshield and go hit some dips and go drive around and just show you how it uh, is just completely rock solid. Alright, so we're about to go over a big dip, one that most people would break for, and let's see how the bikes do. <laughs> I can't wait to see the video from that. What's up guys, I'm back in my house. I realized I uh, forgot to record an outro and kind of give some final thoughts when I was out there earlier. So you just watched the video, you saw how I put a bike on the rack, you saw some details, you got to see it driving around and hitting a really big dip. I uh, do wish I had filmed that from the outside or had Olivia film me going through that dip. It's not like just a little mellow dip. It's what I used to use in my Tacoma to test uh, bump travel and whatnot but um, like anything you know it's it's an extension so there is always going to be some sort of movement but the important thing is that the bikes don't hit each other and the bikes won't hit like a camper shell or you know the vehicle which my old one-up did and you saw a video of that and that was not an exaggeration that was not with the tire super low that was it as cranked as it could be and it was still hitting my camper shell and if I had another bike on it they would just be slapping together so I really do believe in this rack and I'm not paid by rigged nothing like that they are my friends and I'm making this video to show my support for them because I do believe in this rack and you know is it for everyone maybe not uh, I think it's definitely more catered towards like I said earlier, overlanders, off-roaders, people that go camping and bring bikes. And I think it could be a great everyday rack. There's no reason it can't be. It's not like so overbuilt that you shouldn't consider it, but a big thing you should consider is it's made in the USA. 
and it's made well and it's made to be rebuildable. So yeah, if something does happen, you could go to the hardware store and get hardware for it. Or you could call rigged and say, Hey, this happened. I need to fix it. And they'll have the parts for it, which is cool. And it is just really heavy duty, but I guess the negative would be that it's heavy. I don't know the actual weight. I've never weighed it. I'm sure it's on Rigged's website and I'll put a link to that in the description, but you know, it's heavy. I think if you are a smaller person or, you know, it's something you take on and off like every day, maybe this isn't the right one for you. But if you ride mountain bikes, you ride e-bikes, you bring multiple bikes, I think it is. And to that point, it's actually uh, modular. So at the end, there's a cap on that tube and you can sort of infinitely expand it. I, I know that there's a limit. I'm sure Rig would say, don't do an eight bike rack, but if you bought a single, you can make it a double. If you bought a double, you can make it a triple, etc. So that's kind of my thoughts on the rack. I think I'm going to do another video with it on the van, uh, with the single stinger that I have that doesn't have a pivot, but that's going to have to happen at a later time. And I will be updating you guys very soon on what's going on with the van. So stay tuned.